Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is Debbie G of Spirituality Gone Wild. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. And we may get a drop in from Neo. Not 100% sure of that, but uh, he I, I guess he's doing what he often does this time. You're traveling. He said he's not even sure where he's going to be in the next couple hours because he's on a bus. But he is going to try to connect in. So if he can, that'll be great. But uh, my good friend Debbie G is hooked in. And uh, Debbie, uh, it's been a couple weeks, actually. So I kind of missed you. How you been? I'm super duper fabuloso. Well, that's good. Seriously, good. I, like that. I had I had this like greatest, uh, you know, wonderful soak in Epsom salt. And it just was so, you know, those, just, you know, you just like I have I can and I'm going to mm. just have that self care. And then this little creepy thing came up in my head and said, wasn't that a little bit long? I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. It's not long. I just have so much deep appreciation for that moment and that time. And, you know, just for being here and now, it was really great. I've had an interesting week. I got to go to get a hormone check because here I am mm. at almost 55. Now, let me tell you something. I was not wanting to own the fact that I'm getting older and I'm still not, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> I'm still not doing that, but I have to, had to, needed to do this thing. There is an adjustment in there that I wasn't prepared for. And, and that one's kind of got me a little, you know, that that's really happening. That really, mm. this is, this is really that like next step into life that, that women, and men face. So I thought that was an interesting endeavor. So that's probably the reason I'm taking extra time in that self care to let that kind of soak in. That's good, though. Um, yeah, because we need to I mean, there's well, there's so many reasons why we are rough on ourselves. So anytime we can give ourselves self care, that's good. But especially when we're dealing with things that are, you know, challenging and that's what you're dealing with right now something that's challenging so absolutely i'm glad well, you're taking care of yourself well thanks but look i was i i'm gonna be real here i had a hysterectomy like in my early 30s and i thought i would bypass <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna bypass it well, welcome to humanity <laughs> i am yeah. grateful i am grateful to have the ability to have great great physicians honestly so I'm good, but I just thought I'd share that for anybody out there that has to face that moment where you go, hmm, bioidentical hormones are going to be in my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, yep. super, super interesting stuff, but hey. <laughs> well, we've got some more interesting stuff coming on because we also have a special guest joining us today. Her name is Dr. Michelle Nallenberg, and uh, Michelle has a very interesting background. She is a... a, a a uh, psychologist, psychotherapist. Um, she's written some books. In fact, she has a book coming out very soon that she just got her her first copy from the for, from the publisher. She's so excited. You, you just look, you can see the look on her face as, as she's even thinking about it. And she'll tell us a little bit about the book, I'm sure, as well. But uh, she also has a very important um, focus that she she gives a lot of attention to in her life. She wants to basically help people to deal with three particular things. I won't even give you all the details about that. I'm going to let her do that. But uh, Michelle, first of all, welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us Thank today. You. Thank you so much for having me. Glad to have you. And uh, like I said, I wasn't going to do the introduction of, of what it is that you do. I'm going to let you do that. Tell us what are those, the, there's three oh. things that you focus on primarily. What are those three things? Yeah. So it's a pillar. I call it a pillar, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the book, it's called ACE Your Life, A-C-E. So it's acceptance, compassion, and empowerment. Oh, okay. Those are the three elements. And those tell us a little bit about why those three. You know, part of part of the subtitle of the book is like unleash your best self and live the life you want. And I use the word unleash very, very purposefully because it is within all of us. And I really want to make that point because sometimes we feel like we need to find something or look for something. And my perspective is it's right here. You know, sometimes it's repressed for a good reason, right? Sometimes for whatever reason, we can't find ourselves. We're stuck. Whatever, you know, dimension is happening for each of us because each of us are different. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that you know that you have to actually focus on yourself rather than looking outside of yourself to find resources is so empowering. 
And when I tell people that, they're like, oh, right? Because in, <laughs> in society, there's like all of these things you should be doing, right? To make improvements. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? And, and you know, when people hear, oh, this is actually something you need to, right? Even like, I'll just use an example. And my first book is on like kind of health and wellness. But this idea about losing weight, right? Or gaining health. Mm-hmm. Right, we have all of these resources. If you go on the web, diets, right, and exercise regimens. I mean, yeah, I mean, we forget it, right? It's vast. So it's much so, so we, huge. Yeah, so much that we get confused by it. There's so many like messages, right? We could get so confused by it: what to eat, what not to eat, whatever. The the point that I'm making, right, is that until somebody, there's no magic tricks, <laughs> like. There's no magic tricks until you empower yourself, right? To follow like a healthy regimen of like exercise and eating right and self-care and all the wonderful things, right? That's what it takes. Which by the way, really is a magic trick right there. Yes. But because that's, it, that's, that's the part that we, that's the part we kind of skip over really fast, right? Yes. And then, <laughs> then people, people go into, oh, but like motivation and like, you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, no, no. I don't have like a vein that says like motivation <laughs> that you don't have. Like we have the same body. I don't understand like what that even means, right? <laughs> but it has to do that I, you know, people say to me, like when I, I'm very, very like, um, I'm very, I'm not going to say stringent, but I, I'm really like, uh, you know, practical in terms of the way I eat and I eat very healthy and very mindfully, right? People mm-hmm. like, And when I go out to dinner, sometimes it evokes people's insecurities because they're like, I know I shouldn't be eating this, but, you know, (laughs) (laughs) right. Or, or like they'll, they'll cook and they'll say, just so you know, it has in it, you know, like people the need to like mention it to me, which is pretty interesting. Um, And, and I, I'm like, you don't really need to be like, you know, letting me know about that. But, but the point is, is that, the reason why I do follow that is because I have this like kind of value that I live by, which is I matter, you know? Yeah. And if, if yeah, That's if, it. If, yeah, if I matter, that means I'm going to act a certain way and it goes across my life. I don't care if I'm talking to somebody. I don't care if I'm eating. I don't care if whatever I'm doing, it's with the intention of I matter. And that's 24 7 24 7 so the reason why you know you're talking about kind of these kind of you know principles or pillars or however you want to refer to it is one is having full acceptance of who we are and full acceptance of the world around us okay that doesn't mean that we just relent that's not what i'm referring to okay because that's like people get scared oh my god i'm giving myself permission to be lazy and to not be productive (laughs) i know right (laughs) boy we can be rough on ourselves really really rough on ourselves oh my god (laughs) yeah seriously and and our mind runs wild you know oh yes compassion compassion self-compassion like when do we you know and, and i use this little um this little exercise where I'll have people look in the mirror and I have to tell you the reactions that I get. It's, it's like, it's amazing. People get so uncomfortable and awkward that they're looking at themselves. (laughs) I know mirror work real well. And I remember the very, very first time I tried to do it. I've talked about it many times on the show and I, I'll, I'll, I love to repeat how the first experience went. The very first experience went something like this. I love you. Oh God, I can't do this. That was the entire story. <laughs> Walt. Hey, look, I, I'm going to tell you, I love this so much. I remember being in the bathroom, kind of that same thing going on. But honestly, I think I did most of my mirror work online. I've been doing this for five years. And I saw yesterday or the day before, like one of them I had done from the very first one ever, like trying to figure out Facebook Live. I'm appreciating how far I've came, but literally watching myself and not not downing myself or something or this or that, but saying, I learned to laugh. I learned to appreciate me. I was appreciating where I was at that time. 
I was, I, I'm just absolutely a goofball. And I'm like looking at me going, wow. So I don't know. My mirror work was, I, I think it might've been done in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still being done in front of the audience. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and also also non-judgmentally, right? Mm. That's like, yeah, magic, right? Like explosion, totally. Like, could you look at yourself and just be like, oh, okay, I see a nose and I could see a mouth and I could see eyes, and right? Not like I see this kind of nose and this kind of eyes, right? <laughs> like all the adjectives. and I, I love that. I will say this. I was I was a little judgy. I was when I looked at my when I looked at my five year self five years ago self it was barely fifty. <laughs> <laughs> that part, uh -huh. and I went, whew. You know, um, one of the things that happened, and Michelle, I'm interested to see what you'll say about this that I have dealt with because body dysmorphia is something I've had forever. I in my early 30s lost 150 pounds, and pretty much that's it's always been this dysmorphia. I've always seen myself as being huge and fat. Like I'm talking about, mm -hmm. I'm just this, so it's something I've had to work really hard on. One of the things that's really hit me a lot is when I look at pictures of myself, even from two years ago, even from, I just look and I go, why did I think I was fat? Mm. What was going on with me that I saw myself as this person that I'm not? You know, and it's been, I'm, st I still, this is not over. I'm still working on this. Just to be honest, I'm not, True. I'm still mm -hmm. looking to, for clothes that are going to hide any part of me that I don't want jiggling in public. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but now, yeah, I'll just yeah. let you. I was just going to say that the work then is to notice the judging. Mm. No, not right. Cause it's it's we have a thought and then we have a thought about the thought and then we have a feeling about the thought and then we have a thought about the feeling right yeah and before you know it literally it's like whoosh, layers and layers and layers and then we spiral it's a right? cascade yeah yeah so it, it's just like no wow look at my mind it's like it's criticizing me it's saying this and that about me wow what's going on that it's it's really kind of critical right now. What is going on, right? Like being so curious about it and like being really inquisitive. It's almost like we're, all, we're our own science experiments, like to think about it that way, right? Yeah, like look at the way my mind thinks. The other thing is what you mentioned, which happens all the time, because this is the human brain, right? And the way we're wired is comparison. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I love what you said, because you said, when I look at myself two years ago or three years ago, four years ago, you're, again, it's, it's comparison. Totally. Yeah. Like, if you could just be with in that moment and say, like, that was me two years ago. Right. Right. That was me two years ago and appreciate what I'm seeing. Celebrate rather than get into compersion versus comparison. So I see, That's celebrate right. who I was two years ago, celebrate who I am yeah, now, exactly. celebrate, celebrate. If you, if you could yeah. say, wow, look at me two years ago. Wow, look at me now, right? And your, your mind's gonna keep going back. Oh, criticize, crit ah, criticize. Come back here, come on, baby, come here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love this. So yeah. what I'm hearing you, what I'm hearing you say is that to take a moment and and when we catch ourselves being judgy, or to catch myself being judgy, that I simply go into observance and I observe. You and know, then to be, yeah. to be noticing yeah. without judging and then to be curious as to why. So ask the question, why do I feel that way? Or why am I experiencing what what's happening here for me? It's not even why. It's not even why. Okay. No, you know why? Because we try, we always try to have explanations for things because we think if we explain it, that we're going to understand it and we're going to be okay with it. It's true. It's so right. true. <laughs> That's so on point. Yeah. Do, you think, <laughs> do you really think you're going to ever be okay with that, Debbie? Seriously? Yeah, no, probably not ever. No. You're not. <laughs> I'm telling you you're not. Because you know what happens as we age? Guess what? We only get like older. So you know what that means, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's more to criticize. Guess what? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you can, you can be criticizing it yourself from today until tomorrow. And it only, right, you have just more to criticize, so to speak. Of course, there's so much, again, if you're open, there's beauty in all of it, right? Mm. Like mm -hmm. wrinkle is experience. It's maturity, right? It's all of those things, right? It depends the way you're expressing it. If you say it as maturity and experience, wow, how amazing is that? That you could sit and contemplate that, right? What you've been through in your life and how meaningful that was. You're going to say, yeah. Oh, I've just, I'm listening to, I am, I'm in agreement with you a hundred percent. I love that alignment. Something. Yeah. Think about it. So there was this sassy grand that I followed on TikTok because I just think she was the most adorable thing recently. She, she transitioned. But I thought to myself a couple of times, you know, I'm going to be that lady that's just going to say whatever I'm going to say. And they're going to be like, isn't she cute? <laughs> so just, she's a wildly, wildly truthful, wildly authentic, wildly a smart ass. And I'm like, wow. yo, why can't we? Do I'm just going to do it now. I'm just not, I'm not always getting the, oh, isn't she cute? <laughs> it's like, who? Uh-huh. Yeah. Authentic. Authentic. Oh, authentic is everything yeah, authentic. and my delivery can my delivery i'm working on it i i'm experimenting with my delivery <laughs> well, i think we all are let's be honest oh totally. Uh, totally, totally so yeah so i think i think you know if we could just like notice and also label so like if if the criticism is coming up just say critical you know just critical it helps when you label it because it puts it in perspective and it allows you to then return back to yourself, you know, without getting sucked into whatever it is that's usurping your thinking, right? Oh, wait, leaving it behind, really. Well, again, we're not forcing anything to do anything. I mean, I, I want to make that point, right? Because we have this idea that we can control our thoughts and feelings, you know, like look, look on social media, a thousand ways to be happy. 200 ways to be happy, right? And it, there's this nuance, there's this sense that if you're not happy, there's something wrong with you. And that if you're not happy, you need to become happy. So we're always flawed. We're always criticizing ourselves, no matter what. It's it's all out there. You know, in everything that we do, listen, living here, you know, in the Western world, it's all about productivity. And if we don't produce, and if we're not working hard, we're, you know, right? It We're not depends on how you look at it. Because, I mean, for me, one of my biggest breakthroughs in life was recognizing that I actually could select how I was going to feel. I, I thought for the longest time that what I felt and, and my response to things was going to be purely based on what the thing was. So, you know, if a sad thing happens, I'm going to feel sad. A happy thing happens, I'm going to feel happy. And I'm, I'm basically limited to whatever my experience is. It, it, it took me a lot of years to finally realize, oh, I can actually feel differently about something. To me, so to me, that's an empowering thing. Well, but but it it depends on the way you're thinking about that. So the only tweak I'm going to make to what you said, and with all due respect, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I I challenge you to think about this. Okay, I'm going to challenge you a little bit, right? So if I say to you, like, no matter what, before we get off this call, like, I want you to forget the number four. Okay, I want you yeah, to get good luck with that. I want you to get <laughs> out of your mind. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Now, your mind, what it does is it tries to forget the number three, but as it's trying to forget the number four, as it's trying to forget the number four, it's remembering the number four in order to forget it. Right. It doesn't work. We can't talk ourselves out of thoughts and feelings. Okay. As hard as we try, we also have a negativity bias. That's naturally in the synapses of our brain, okay? this I'm talking about neurologically, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you think about an event or an experience that you had that was profoundly negative and distressing, the feelings that you had, you can actually recall. You cannot recall happiness and joy in the same way that you can recall distress. You can't. It's not possible. I'm talking about the visceral, physiological feelings. You can't. Trust me on that. Try it. You'll see. Right? If I tell I, you... I, I disagree. I'm sorry. I just do. Okay. <laughs> but if I tell you right now, I want you to be happy, or I want you to be sad, or I want you to whatever, you, you can't flip. You, you can't. It's not possible. The way that you do that is that you build your confidence right around your values. 
that's the way you do that. And the more you do that, right, you're not kind of coming out of the woodworks and saying, I feel this way, I think this way, but you're actually having evidence to support that so that you're thinking about it in a really purely and deeply authentic way. So if I say to myself, I'm kind, and I feel really proud of myself, like I'll, I'll just, I'll give you an example, okay? I'm a Psychology Today blogger. Mm -hmm. And my blogs get a nice showing, but I, the, my last two blogs that I wrote were on, were happened to be on anxiety, okay? Now I know this is where I gotta be writing because wow. So I keep looking at the numbers because I'm like, blown away. But the last blog got, I mean, it's up to, I think, 150,000 reads. And this new one that I just wrote in one day, I think it's almost up to 200,000, right? Which is like, wow. Cool. I mean, That's great. Yeah. So I was sitting on my Peloton this morning because I exercise, you know, I was sitting on the Peloton and I, I, I was thinking about, like, I can, I was really connecting to on a really deep level about the number of people that are reading this blog and the number of people that I'm helping. Like I really connected to that. And I, I literally had tears coming down my eyes because I felt so touched both by both by by me being able to help people and by people being interested in reading it. Both of those things touched me on, on a, such a deep, deep level, okay? Now, I can't just feel that way I, and why. And then the other thought that came up was, I felt so proud because I put so much time and effort and energy into my writing and to being with people and helping people that it felt so good that that it's that it's actually reaching people that it's really making a difference like you know I was overcome with joy yeah, okay sure. but that's authentic that comes from what where does that come from my value what value of kindness and thoughtfulness and care and nurture Even your value for service yeah. <clears throat> excuse me yeah. that's i have to agree. i i'm really big on value that's how when that was i stayed alone for a long time and when i met my husband his values were what were what was important to me but tuning them into our like what you were relaying what i heard you saying was, was that you were sitting with the experience of all of these people having aha moments because you you have taken that step and in that same and in that that grateful beingness that's what i call that moment of joy where the tears fall down your face because it just you're at one minute you're at one minute with source you're at one minute with creator you've allowed yourself to be a vessel to allow this to flow through and that's there's so much beauty in that and to flow through to other people and then what i also heard you say is celebrating you and being proud of you and which is probably one of the biggest things in the, the if anything if, to teach anyone to be proud of yourself rather than seeking in someone else for that external bullshit validation that you think you need i love that and i but love that, that you shared that that'd be another important piece to this which mm -hmm. goes back to what you were saying walt if somebody came over to me and said that i'm not thoughtful or not caring i wouldn't believe them because it's not true. Well, but, 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 but I wouldn't, my critical mind that's yeah. wired for criticism, neurologically, I'm talking mm -hmm. about neurobiology, mm -hmm. won't buy into that shit. It, it wouldn't. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's but so when, true. Yeah. When we don't have that visceral connection to our authenticity, mm -hmm. our feelings are fleeting. Our feelings are fleeting. They come and go, you know, they ebb and flow. But that is such a profound kind of core because I work on it because my feelings align with my values and the way I think about myself and the way I behave and everything that I do and on and on and on. You know what I mean? It's what yeah. I want to talk, breathe, da, da, da. So my point, you know, is that thoughts and feelings are fleeting from, think about this, in one moment, like this is fascinating, right? In one moment, we could be at the grocery store, we could have a nice interaction or encounter with a person and feel connection. Two seconds later, we could turn around and another person could be really nasty to us and we could have an angry, frustrated feeling and we could actually lash out on them and then have a negative feelings towards ourselves for lashing out on them. I'm just saying, in like five minutes, our feelings are, you know, it could go. <laughs> and it has so much to do with 
you know, who we're interacting with, how we're thinking about ourselves. It has to do with if we got enough sleep, if we eat enough that day, if we're whatever. So we, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's just so fleeting. So if you really want a set of feelings, like you're saying, or to kind of cultivate feelings, you got to be acting or cultivating them in a way that really aligns with who you are and how you want to be, you know, which really encompasses, I guess, what I'm talking to. Does that make Um, more sense? I I think I agree with that. I I think I'd like to uh, add a little bit to it. Um, But I I agree with the general outline that you presented there. Um, The one thing I'd like to add to it is that what I learned was that it, it wouldn't really matter if somebody else told me to feel a certain way because I wouldn't want to do it anyway. So really that wasn't even part of the equation in terms of whether or not I could select what it was that I was feeling. It mm-hmm. wasn't up to somebody else, it was up to me. And mm-hmm. to me, the part that says it's up to me is the part that you were talking about when you say aligning with your authentic self. So. I agree with what you're saying. I just see that as being me selecting. I don't see that as me limiting myself to here's my authentic self. I, I, I really can't lead my authentic self. There's, there's no way to be outside of my, my authentic self. I can try to block myself yes, from, yeah. from that, from that uh, experience of, of authentic self, but I can't ever leave it. I can't ever be separated from it. I think it's one of the mistakes that we make in a lot of the, uh, the thought processes that we use when we're trying to understand how we interact with our world and how we interact with our internal world. We yeah. tend to, to, we talk about, you know, shutting off our feelings, shutting off our, our connection to source, shutting off our connection to God. All, we can never shut any of that stuff off. It never actually turns off. Now. So instead of talking about it in terms of shutting it off or blocking it or or resisting it, I I like to think about it in terms of I'm always working from that space. So within that space, I'm always able to make selections. So when I talk about being able to learning that I, that I could actually select my feelings, I I was thinking within that space because I really can't leave that space. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure what you mean by selecting my feelings. What, what do you mean? I mean, I mean that I can see a, a sad experience. Okay. That, an experience that would be gen- generically, you know, objectively referred to as sad, okay. and I can find sometimes I can find joy in it. Sometimes I can find serenity in it. Sometimes I can find happiness in it. It depends on what the thing is. Now, I'm going to be also respectful respectful of people around me if people are, are experiencing sadness i'm not going to say oh i feel so good why don't you feel so good i'm not that that would just be you know, rude yeah. but that doesn't mean that i can't find something to feel good about something that other people are finding sadness in. and that to me was a revelation okay that was a huge revelation because i really thought we were so hardwired that i couldn't make that selection when i first tried to do it actually it was kind of tough i was so completely out of practice but okay then I could learn to actually actively do it on a more regular basis. I, it was like a di- discovering a superpower. Hmm. So I, I think I think what I'm hearing you say is opening yourself up to other things that you're maybe not in your awareness at the t- at the moment. Is that what you mean? Well, certainly that's one way to, to get there. Um, okay. But literally what I've been learning to do over time is to, and I think the, the the accurate part was when you talked about doing it from your, your values. I, I have always been very clear about what my values were. My values were, it was never really in doubt for me. Yeah. Other people that may have been, that may be an issue. For me, I've always known exactly what was important to me and what, you know, what, what was, was completely unimportant, what was so, so, so. So it, it, any time that I ever thought about any situation going on, I was always doing it from my values. It was just, that I, I, I have not figured out a way to separate that. Maybe there's probably a way to do it because I see people do it, but I haven't been able to figure it out yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so when I, when I think about it from this context, I say, okay, mm-hmm. as I'm looking at this thing or I'm, as I'm uh, observing this event or I'm seeing how this person is, is experiencing something or if I'm seeing this, this activity that's going on and I'm seeing a whole range of people who are responding with X kind of emotion, I can look at it like, wow, that's a really interesting emotion. I never would have thought of it that way. <laughs> For me, that emotion is something I, I'm going to feel completely different about because I don't want to feel that way. I want to feel the way I would actually love to feel about it. And mm-hmm. so for me, that's what selecting is. Selecting is being true to yeah. who I am and going with who I, what I want to be, how I want to react. react. So, 
yeah. how to respond. Well, I definitely hear that. And and I, I think it's wonderful that you're able to do that. Most people are not. So well, it's I, a skill. It's a skill. It, it's a skill I had to learn. I, yeah. mean, I did not have it before. I did not have it 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, you could definitely cultivate. And I think it's cultivating it. And that's actually what my oh, whole yeah. book but that's why my whole book is about. Okay. <laughs> it's, okay. How to it, it's how to cultivate that. Um, but there are people who have significantly more anxious minds than others. Yes. Or more depressed minds, right? Okay. Or more, yeah. So I think, I, I think, I don't think we could be prescriptive. That's all I'm saying on, you need to do this and then this happens, you know? And that's why what I try to do is give kind of very general kind of ways and skills, right? And strategies, no matter what kind of mind you have that you're able to cultivate that. And I think mm -hmm. that varies from person to person. That's probably um, what Yeah, yeah. 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 Everybody's very much an individual. I, I do wanna say that because I have some clients that, you know, that I work with, some patients that I work with, like they come in, they're invested, they're like, you know, they come in and they work hard and they, you know, get incredible results and it's like, you know, right? And then I have some others who are so stuck profoundly because of trauma, complex trauma, childhood trauma, um, life experience. And I can't even make up some people's life experience. Oh, I have yeah. to, I mean, I can't even make it up because whether it's like multiple losses, mm -hmm. you know, oh, yeah. profound physical challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, that has nothing to do. We have like, we have no control over these things. So some people have, you know, so they're working with so much more than others. And we all have something, you know, of course, right? Like I call it like the little T and the big T, like little trauma is a big trauma. <laughs> we all have them, like, you know, some variation of them. But it, I, I wish it were so easy, you know, that we could just kind of flip our thoughts and feelings on like, you know, like a light switch. Well, I, don't, I don't want to make it sound like it's easy. I, it, it yeah. takes a lot. It takes a whole lot to it, get to that point. It does. It does. And I, I, I wish it were easier. <laughs> no, sure. Me too. That's why I, I do a podcast. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, actually, what if, I. What, yeah. what if it? What if it wasn't as hard as that? What if it was easier? And and I've had a yeah. lot. Without your dark, you wouldn't know your spark. Yes. Yes. I've had it. You name it. Yeah. Give me. Give me one. Yeah. I mean, I love that. <laughs> But here's the deal. Like, I know that that was there. And I was, my brain has had, I'm working on, I've been working on re rewiring the neural pathways of this brain for quite some time. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not done. Now, one of the things that I did was change my mindset mm -hmm. from, to it, to one little change. Look, you know what I said yesterday? I said, I'm going to need to make a better decision today about this thing <laughs> or whatever. You know, I made a decision. I made one yeah. little decision. I brought my jumpy jump in or my, the, I don't want to say the actual name, you know, the trampoline. Yeah. I brought <laughs> it in my room to get on it, to do my thing. Yeah. It was one, one decision, one step, one yeah. something because I was that person who didn't, who had either ran anxious depressed. I was running from set points in my brain that I had no idea. So I completely know that. But this idea that things have to be so hard yeah. is something that I'm, I'm really, my personal journey is to get past that. But I yeah. think that's what you're talking about in this I, book. I am. Well, you know, I, as we're speaking, you know, I wrote, you know, I write these kind of little, I give like these little tiny like graphics of things that are like kind of quick and easy. And so when we were talking, I thought about this graphic that I put together that I feel like really speaks to everything we're talking about. It really focuses on mindset, but it's um, people who live empowered lives, what they do, what their mindset is, right? And I'll just, you know, because just think about them and how profound they are. If you just even think about it, right? They accept and face adversity no matter how challenging. Yes. Right? They have a mission and purpose led by their values, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We find meaning and opportunity for growth in challenging times. Yeah, that's right. They, they have a social support network and support others. Yep. They can self-regulate and control their impulses. They're able to improvise, right? Flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. 
they remain flexible, open, and aware because the awareness are open to deeper, more connected relationships, right? And seek out new experiences that enrich enrich their lives. Oh, right? That's good. Yeah. yeah. I know. Mm -hmm. I, I I give I gave like some of my patients like these things and they like put it on their fridge and they're like, you know, <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, because if you think about like, are you behaving in those ways? Mm. You know, when a challenge is coming your way, are you like again in denial? Are you avoiding? Like, what are you doing? Right? Or are you actually right? There was it, just right before we got on, I was with a patient, such a sweet like you know. Again, she's. Uh, going into college. So she just graduated high school and we're, we're talking and she's in camp. She's in sleepaway camp. Right. Mm. But we're talking about like this hookup generation and culture. Yeah. And, yeah. And she's telling me about, you know, somebody that she's hooking up with. Right. And she's deciding, she decided that she actually wants to have sex with this person. Right. But she's struggling with her own identity, her own sexual identity. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know if she should, she doesn't know what she should do because she wants to have sex with this person. And she thinks that this person would be a good first experience for her. But she also knows that she's kind of experimenting. So how should she handle this? And we were, it was such a, like, really, like, such a delightful conversation with this, like, young, like, person mm -hmm. who, like, who was caring. She was caring. She was concerned about how all of this was going to pan out for her. And I said to her, I said, you know, respect. She's like, what do you mean? I go respect for you. She goes, why? I said, because you're being so considerate of this other person. Like you want to inform them where you're at so that they could make an informed decision about how they want to, how they want to behave. How thoughtful are you? Right? Because that person's going to go into it with a certain idea and impression without knowing that this is going on for you. They deserve to make an informed decision on whether they want to have sex or not. And if they don't have this information, they're actually not making an informed decision. How thoughtful are you? More people should be like you. And she's like, wow, I didn't think about it that way. You know, mm -hmm. but, but, but like kind of cultivating her to understanding that she is acting like we talked about what value and i said to her what value is operating for you right now and she said thoughtfulness and i said right on mm -hmm. like you are exercising that value and guess what the challenge was for her because she's socially the reason i started seeing her is because she has social anxiety so mm -hmm. for her to have this kind of conversation with this person mind-blowing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. How is she going to have it? What is she going to say? What if, you know, the person reacts this way or that way? Like this was all that was like looming for her. Mm -hmm. But I said to her, you have a decision to make now. Do you want to have this conversation or not? What decision are you going to make? Right. And she's like, I'm up for the challenge. And I was like, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's where it's at. And I said to her, it's irrespective. It's irrespective of the results it's the process right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we don't know what's gonna happen we don't know how the person's gonna react to you and i said to what's the worst thing that could happen the person will say sorry not into it like find your first experience somewhere else you know right <laughs> okay are you willing to are you willing right for that trade-off yes you know so it's like these moments these pivotal moments like you talk about where somebody's able to make the shift, but really challenge them in this kind of mist, mist of adversity, like for themselves. And by the way, don't we have decisions like this that we're making every moment of every day? No, oh, sure. Oh my goodness. We, we do. And I, I, I mean, not necessarily sex, but I mean, there's like all kinds of, of Whatever. situations. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. Well, the, it's, but our value system is, everything because what i discovered because because i wasn't the person who knew what values were i wasn't that person mm -hmm. if it's not meeting my value i didn't I, there was no connection so now i know when i am looking at what value this is meeting i know my authentic voice mm -hmm. is there to follow i love how that you brought her into that space though because there's some deep understanding and knowing what your value for something is and if someone is or isn't meeting it are you meeting it first though I, that was really, that's really special well, to do that. Well, but yes, we do do it every day. 
So Debbie, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I, I want to add one more thing to that because this this is really helpful with decision making. And this has changed my life personally, I have to tell you. This really changed my life. So when we have to make decisions that are really challenging for us, the reason why that's the case is because we have conflicting values. Okay? It's not vanilla ice cream and chocolate ice cream. Okay? It rubs a bit against two values. So actually what I said to her, why do you think you're struggling with this? What's going on for you? And she said, I really, really want him to be my first experience. And I said, why is that? And she said, because I trust him. He's a nice person. You know, there's this like kind of inherent trust and etc. So I said, that's wonderful. And I said, so what value is that? And she said, I don't know. It sounds like I'm being kind of selfish. And I'm like, selfish is not a value. Sorry. <laughs> Let's get a little deeper. Self-care, you know, or, right, it's self-care, self-preservation, whatever you want to call it. For her, she was thinking about what is going to be the best first sexual experience for her. That's okay. Like, that's okay for her to be thinking about that, mm -hmm. right? So she recognized, she saw herself as being selfish and horrible and uh, right? And that's the way she expressed it about herself. And I reframed it for her. And I said, no, it's self-preservation, self-care versus right thoughtfulness. Those are up against each other. I can understand why this why this is a, like a really important decision for you. But how do you want to be behaving? What in this circumstance is more formative for you? And I know I could tell you I'm a working mom. I have four kids. You know, as a working mom, I am always confronted with conflicting values, like with work and parenting. I mean, all working parents, like right? Yeah, now, yeah. Whoever, right? We always have these conflicting values. But when you frame it that way, right, you could pay homage and respect for both sets of values and not just kind of X out, right, or ignore the other value. So she could, she was able to say, which was so lovely, I deserve to have a good first experience. Mm -hmm. Like, as a person, like, that's, sure. imp that's important for me. Yeah. Instead of thinking I'm a horrible person and I'm selfish, uh, you know, which is what we do. So that's a little bit of a, you know, I just want to stick that in there because I feel like that when we, when we get into that spot, it really helps with our decision making when we kind of think about it in that mindset. It's really a, a differentiation between what you were calling earlier, the critical mind mm -hmm. and what I'm calling the selective mind. Mm -hmm. the, and, the, the, yeah. And, and in clinical terms, we call it the wise mind. Wait, which, the, which which one is the wise mind? The wise mind is the op, the one that you the, the other the opposite of the critical mind. Okay, yeah, yes. I gotcha. Okay, yeah. that's that's right. the, that's that um, in in dialectical behavioral therapy they call it the wise mind. <laughs> okay, well, take your word for it. You're the expert on that one. I have no clue. <laughs> but <laughs> to me, I, I just call it the selective mind because for yeah. me, that that's where the selection comes in. That's where you can uh -huh. decide what is. It, yeah, I mean, is that wisdom? I well, yeah, I guess it is in a sense. Um, uh -huh. But, but to me, it's more like this is me deciding what I want. Mm. And, and that's really, I think, the, 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 there, are, there are two generic areas that I like to um, think about when I think about what it takes for somebody to have the kind of life that they're wanting to have, to mm -hmm. experience the kind of experiences they're wanting to have, and so forth. Um, one is generically, broadly, uh, under the, the, the umbrella of self-confidence, self-esteem, mm -hmm. um, self-worth. The other one is broadly uh social connectedness you know the the, the friends the, the contacts the mentors the coaches all that kind of stuff uh, all in one great big package and when i look at it from that perspective of those two pieces um the the, the part that we've been spending a lot of time on right now is the first part the self-confidence self-love self-worth part and it, it's a it's an important piece for a number of reasons not the least of which because most of us don't really have a clear idea of how to build that. And, and I think it's what you're trying to do. You're trying to give people a yes. framework to build that That's without right. beating themselves up every step along the way. That's well, you know, again, in, in, in true mindfulness, it, the, the, what we're thinking or how we're thinking doesn't matter. 
you know, because we, we are going to beat ourselves up. We can't get rid of that. I mean, I think that's the point. It's irrespective. You know, we give too much, we give too much credence to our thoughts and feelings. What should and, we give credence to instead? Um, our values. It, it really comes down to that. Yeah, we give too much credence. Like I have- really, thought, really do. Yeah, I gotta I, just, just yeah. too, too, yes. Yeah. I have, I, have, I have a sign on my door. I have a sign on my door, literally, that says, don't believe everything you think. No shit. I'm yeah. serious right now. I have really, it's so true. <laughs> I'm going to get it. I want to show it to you. Watch this, okay? I'm going to show it to you, okay? I think she just rang your bell, Debbie. I mean, oh my goodness. I, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> Seriously, I love this right now. Don't okay. believe everything you think, yeah. dear God. That's on my door. Ah! <laughs> seriously it's beautiful. beautiful it's bullshit it is, it is. <laughs> and, and i and i have to say i've been getting into a lot of, I, I i do a lot of work on kind of again i teach a mindfulness class at nyu and i i'm very into kind of you know our thoughts feelings etc but i i'm also getting very heavily into polyvagal theory i don't know if you heard about it no i haven't tell me about this oh fascinating i'm telling you i am so right. like fascinated I love neurobiology and I like our kind of, cause I'm, I'm all about mind body. Right. So um, it, it's really like this new wave of research on our, on our nervous system. And, you know, what I find when I'm working with people, you know, we're up against our minds, which is our neurobiology, but we're also up against our bodies and we have to work on our nervous system as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because often it's also our nervous system that gets us stuck as well. So the combination of both working in this way, you know, and, and I have to tell you, I like one regret that I have is I got into all of this, you know, polyvagal theory and strategies after I wrote my book. And, I was yeah. like, and I'm, I'm like torn up about it because the empowerment chapters, because each chapter, each like acceptance, compassion, empowerment, I split them up between what are the barriers and how to cultivate it, right? And the first two chapters, the first chapter is in on our thinking and the second chapter is on our values, right? So like I would have definitely, definitely added like polyvagal theory and our nervous system in the empowerment chapters because it really needs to be there. So everybody's like, oh, I'll write another book. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Well, you well, know, that's what, actually, like. that's what, I, what I was thinking. Yeah. How how is it? So I, I'm going to guess yeah. that it's a like an advanced version of somatic healing or somatic therapy. It's you know it's understanding. It's putting language to in some respects of what goes on for us in our physical body. You know, mm -hmm. and again, there's this hierarchy. I, I don't want to get into the mechanism of like again there's so much science to it. Like, I don't want to bog you down with that. Some people are fascinated, but I'm fascinated by that. Some people are not, but basically like we go into, you know, it's either, you know, the, um, you know, the ventral vagal state, which is our connection and, you know, our connection, our relational part of ourselves. Right. Or we could go into the sympathetic nervous system, which is re really the fight, flight, or freeze. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the dorsal vagal, which is our shutdown, where we literally shut down. And depending on what goes on for us, we really do go in and out of these states. Mm -hmm. um, so part of part of the neuroscience and the science research on the polyvagal theory, and what you're talking to Walt before is how we could change the way that we're changing our mindset is by actually train like so there's a lot of studies on mindfulness and what we found is that it actually grows the gray matter of our brain so they see it on mris like this right. is a structural change to our neural pathways that's right mind, mind blowing i mean mm -hmm. mind blowing oh yeah sure. yeah mind expanding literally <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, totally so i mean talk about talk about like not aging there mm. you go I'm all about that right now. In fact, I'm looking, what, 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 what book, honestly, where the, where, where the, where, the, the, where, where would you, what's, what would you suggest that we do to find uh -huh. the best information on this? Okay. So it, for polyvagal theory, which is, it's sort of the same thing that I'm talking about for mindfulness, but the body. Right. Um, so Stephen Porges, he's the person who developed, you know, polyvagal theory. 
Um, and he, again, his is more, you know, uh, I would say more science-based and more neurologically based. Deb Dana, D-B-D-A-N-A. She, her, her, new, her new book. Uh, here it is, actually. I use it with a lot of my clients. It's called Anchored. It's called Anchored. And this is a I swear, I've, why do I feel like I heard? No, I'm just know, not. I have not. But mm -mm, this yeah. is just. Okay, so I, I, yeah, so I studied it again. She writes a lot for therapists to work with clients on developing the poly, you know, again. So, but she has a couple of books and this is her most recent one that speaks to the lay person and how, again, to grow this part of you, you know, your nervous system so that you're staying and you're constantly, constantly growing that part of you that allows you to stay, right? Because we want to stay obviously in our ventral vagal. So the whole book talks about the science, talks about the research, because I believe you really need to know about that to kind of buy into it, which is important. And then it talks, it gives very specific strategies and exercises on how to grow that part. Fascinating. It really- oh, I can't wait. And I'm so excited. I can tell you, <laughs> it works. I promise you it works. It's like so effective. So oh, I imagine it is. Yeah. Well, so. it remind, what you're talking about reminds me of the study that they did on the heart. It's a, it was a science study they did. And the heart sees, like they, they had different images come up in front of people mm -hmm. and they were looking at the reaction time and they they saw that the heart sees it before it even shows in front of them. Mm -hmm. It There is so, and, and the nervous system Mm -hmm. is what reacts, goes to our, everything. I love what you're yeah. saying, and I cannot wait to do, dig give, into this. Can I give you an example? This was fascinating. Sure. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so I, I listen, I do all audiobooks. I'm like an audiobook person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, I, can't, yeah. I can't read. Like my, yeah, I'm too like inattentive to read. <laughs> so <laughs> believe it or not. That's like, a funny thing to hear from a doctor, but okay. <laughs> well, because my, my mind is always like, we're the, you know, anyway, I'm always <laughs> Not not as anxious, but more like I have I'm, I'm always thinking of ideas and things and uh, you know that's my problem anyway. So um, it was so interesting. So I'm listening to her audiobook and I I read everything she wrote because I'm like you know, um, but she she gave this example where she said that she was in a studio and that they gave these different types of music and how when you listen to the music how it affects your nervous system. Now, when you're listening to the audio, you're listening to it because it's there. So mm -hmm. she did. She she like put a tune and all of them were very different. All of them were very different. And then she gave a pause and then she gave another tune and another pause and uh, et cetera. It was fascinating. I have to tell you, I was sitting there and she said, watch what happens to your nervous system as you hear these tunes. It was mind blowing how my nervous system was like all over the place. It had to do with like what tr it triggered in me, like what my experience was in my life, whatever. My, I, it was like crazy. It was crazy. And then she said, do you want to hear something even crazier? She said, I was in the studio when they were cutting these mixes of music and mm -hmm. I still had the nervous system reaction, even though mm -hmm. I saw and I heard and it was right in front of me. I still had that same reaction. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That, but wow. that's like mind blowing if you think about it, isn't it? Like, it's so fascinating. I'm sorry. Well, I get, I, no, I, no, it's all right. It's I get right. very excited by these things. I, we can tell, tell. yeah. <laughs> I think that's beautiful. I love yeah. that because sound, sound is one of the things yeah. our body responds to in so many beautiful ways. And I could just sit and talk to you for hours and listen yeah. to you for hours because yeah. serious. I really appreciate all the value that you brought to our audience today. And how can people get your book and how can they, cause I know that you have to leave a little bit. Early. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's uh, it, again, you could pre-order it. So it's on um, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, thrift books, um, Walmart, all of those. It's called Ace Your Life, Unleash Your Best Self and Live the Life You Want. Um, I am so excited to unleash this to the world because it is my life's work. I really want to say that. And every ounce of my heart goes into this. <laughs> I can't even tell you. Um, so I am so excited to 
you know, to publish it. Um, and you could look at my website, which actually I'm launching a new website today as we speak. Oh, it's wow. Happening. <laughs> you got a whole um, bunch of new things going on. Yeah. Right and and I, I write like all the time on my Psychology Today blog. You know, I also have a foundation, which I also want to say it's called Through My Eyes, T-H-R-U. It's a nonprofit and it offers free clinically guided videotaping for chronically medically ill individuals who want to leave a video for their children and loved ones. Um, and I'm oh, yeah, that's really, beautiful. I'm really, really trying hard. I'm trying to restructure. So I'm really looking for people who are like interested in the mission and who really have, you know, an investment in this mission. Um, so anybody who's interested, please let me know, you know, cause everybody is definitely affected by somebody in their life or they know somebody or, you know, whatever the case is. And I, I personally have videotaped over 300 people and, um, you know, cause I really believe in the clinically guided videotaping, uh, because I ask questions that are very specific to like development of children and also, you know, being there therapeutically for somebody when they're in that unfortunate place anyway. So, um, very invested in that too. And I consider myself like a mental health and health advocate. So I, I really love everything that I do. And I just, I just love talking about these things because I, I want people to really have the, their best life. Our life is so short. I mean, I can't say that enough. I see people who suffer so much. I see people, you know, who experience loss and adversity and you know, I don't have to tell you, life is so short. I think, so I, think short. I think about my kids, like my, my eldest is 22. And I look at him like, what happened? Oh, girl, can I tell you yesterday, my son turned 34, my oldest. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, you're looking at these little baby pictures. I'm like, you're still my baby. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, like all those years, like you, you, you yeah. don't even have any mem like memories that are like fleeting, you know? So anyway, so I just, I just think cause life is so short and it's so precious that we really need to just be living our best life. That's all. I'm really loving the uh, nonprofit that you have and I'd love to know more about it. And I mean, it's just fantastic. I have your information. I'll reach yeah. out to you. We have a, a great show called Unify Women Rising that I, oh. I would love to talk about what it is that you're doing. I think it would be fascinating. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, once again, Walt, you've brought you brought the awesome guests. Thank you. Somehow I get the magic touch. I'm not quite sure you how, but really it's, do. It's, it's, it's just an amazing thing. They just they, they appear out of nowhere, like, oh my goodness, there's another one. <laughs> but well, we really I, do appreciate your your I um, appreciate you know. both of you were so like wonderful to talk to. And I have to say that you brought it out in me. So like I, I just want to say that that when it's thank you, when, I appreciate when, you. When there's so much when there's so much warmth and like people who have passion for helping others, it's you know you connect. That's just the way it is, right? That's a true Absolutely. creative experience, right there. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So yeah, you know, thank Michelle, you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for so joining much. us. Thank you for the work that you're doing, and and best of luck yeah. with whatever you're doing going forward. And good luck with the book that comes out. And I guess it releases officially in September. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. I celebrate you. I celebrate you Thank so you. big. Thank you. All Have right. a great weekend. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. So you too. That, that, that was quite a, a visit there, Debbie. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> it was super wonderful. Yeah, Thank I mean, you. Just, you, you, you get somebody like that who has a passion. It just it, it just resonates. Right. And, and it sticks with you. And I think it's one of the best things. So, yep. Yeah. We appreciate that very much. Bye. So, Thank you, Michelle. Bye, honey. Take care. Um, I, I just keep thinking over and over again about the different perspectives that we have coming onto the show that have come on over the years. And once yeah. again, Michelle brought one more perspective, one new perspective, and obviously a, a, a well-studied expert uh, perspective. I mean, she's a doctor, for goodness sake. You know, so she's really done the homework on this thing. Yeah, she perspective, has. Been. Oh, yeah. Very, very powerful perspective. Really powerful. Well, well, I've got it up right now. Polyvagal theory. So I'm going to tell you there, you know why, you know, why plant medicine is so powerful is because it works on the nervous system. The nervous oh, okay. system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly why, because it's rewiring the nervous system. So I'm imagining things like the polyvagal, like she's talking about and her book and some of her practice. I love some of her practices she was sharing were quite powerful, mm. quite, quite powerful. So I just, 
I think it's fantastic. I am hoping that somebody out there, I know I did, heard something they needed to hear today and that you take it and you use it and you make that one simple choice today that you could make to do that thing different that you've been doing, you know you need to, so just do it. That, that's one of I don't guarantee I, I will, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one of the things I love about doing these, these programs because right? I can always count on the fact, we'll not always know who it is. In fact, very often we won't know who it is. Yeah. But there's always going to be somebody out there who needs to hear one particular piece of the message, or in this case, a large piece of the message um, that, that comes through during the conversations. And so I, I have absolutely no doubt that that person is hearing this as we're, we're recording this right now. So. I know I, I, I literally, I have a whole new audio book to listen to and I'm always oh, so doing <laughs> it on audio because I am not going to sit You're down. You're not a reader read. either. <laughs> I used to be, I used to be a, a big time reader, but I, I think because I used it to escape into a land that, mm -hmm. you know, so things mm -hmm. have changed a little bit now, but anyway, yeah. So I'm just really mm -hmm. excited. And I want to say hey to Rosalie, because I don't know if you're still here, but I've seen all of your comments and whatnot. And Walt and I have, we just, we, we didn't respond. And I apologize yeah, well, we, for that. Well, we didn't want to interrupt Michelle because she was just like, she was yeah, yeah. On, a, on a run there, but absolutely. I saw it too. And yes, we, we very much appreciate those comments and, and the fact that you were in the live stream. Thank you for being part of the live stream. Thank you. This has been great and look forward to having Neil back at some point when he gets out of his ultralight and comes down to earth again. <laughs> Neil's but flying somewhere. Who knows? He really is, but he's having a great time. But it was great catching up with you again and uh, look you forward too. to seeing you next week. And to all of our podcast listeners, thank you very much. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.